COT's base of operations is right here at the Council of Time dot com. COT has no other outlet or venue. These are other folks who will rebroadcast, like Daily Excellence, who is authorized to rebroadcast on my way of video. Yeah. Huh. Live here too. Evidently everything is live. Let me cut that back. Hello everybody. My goodness, are you guys a change? Are you a change from what's in the world? Mm. People are losing it quick. They really are. They're losing it. It's a good thing to have family like this. I hope you guys uh, hang on to your faculties. That I do. Especially in these times. Hey, but you know what? You might be surprised to know what Jesus said about this time. You might be shocked. Today, as uh, I had a phone call today, and so I went to assist um, a group or two. And because it was it was due to Evidently, fights are starting to break out already. It's almost like people have so much pent-up, pent-up uh, emotions. They're coming out all, just spilling out all over the place. Right? An old lady got hurt. This, uh, this guy was about 38. He lost his temper. He struck. That woman had to be at least 70 years old. About 70 years old. Lost his temper. The bad part is, this guy has no history of that. No history. And then not more than 20 minutes later, the same thing happened again to an elderly guy. After all that passed, uh, certain people were trying to come up with a solution for to, to kind of stave off some of that, um, some of the hostilities. And it really opened your eyes to what you're dealing with on a large scale. And we had a conference call, and uh, in this conference call, it seemed as though every fourth county had the exact same problem. Exact same problem. Uh, if this is a foreshadowing of what will be, my goodness, that is just, you know, it's unheard of. It really is unheard of. But these are the exact times spoke about so long ago. And if you guys remember, the instructions I emphasize that Christ gave us for this time, for this very time, right? A principle. A principle not one of us will escape. Not one. I want you guys to understand something. There are many different types of people in the body of Christ. Right? I would consider myself a roughneck. One of the uh, folks meant for the hostile times, right? Many of you, you're not meant for the front lines. Just so you understand that. Many are not, some are not, some are, some are not. The ones that are, are probably on a type of alert internally. The ones that are not are watching out for those who may be on the front lines, all play an important role. But the main thing to remember is this. Each and every person is a member in the body of Christ. They have specific roles. It's just like your body. In the course of your day, you may find yourself in a multitude of situations. Your feet do one thing, your legs do something else, your arms something else. Your hands, something else. Right? 
all your body parts do something. All of your body parts are necessary. Now your hands don't do the same thing your feet do, right? They don't. Your legs are not going to do the same thing your arms do, but each keeps the other in balance. That's what we have to remember. Because you can't expect the hands to be like the feet. You can't expect the feet to be like the shoulders. You can't expect the forearms to be like the thighs, and so on and so forth. You can't expect that. So with encouragement in God's truth, right? That encouragement is necessary during this time. But have an understanding that, listen, when you're faced with things you, maybe you didn't face before, a person who does not have or has not been through hostile times before, they're going to resort to whatever they know. I believe that's part of the disconnect some of you are facing, right? You may be doing what you know to do, and somebody else may be looking at you like, what is that person doing? Well, that person's going to do what they know to do. So in that case, where's the middle ground at? Where's the middle ground? The middle ground is understanding. It's not controlling anybody. It's respecting the other person and encouragement and the truth. Remember, not controlling some of these actions, simply to encourage, but to also know that everybody plays a distinct role. Remember that. See, I have, there are colleagues of mine, they handle situations differently than I. Still, some colleagues are quite passive in how they handle situations, right? I'm somewhat level-headed, I am. Because I've been on that rodeo before, multiple times. So I'm not too excited by what I see. I've been there before. I've seen it in other countries. Well, you've been there before. You kind of have a feel for it. You're not too excited by it, right? Many have not seen this before. They've not been in this type of environment. And if you throw in the, uh, you know, little ideology of a country falling apart potentially okay that's pretty explosive and pretty extreme so instead of fighting each member on what they're doing seek to encourage the other member so whatever they're doing encourage them to go forward with Christ Remember this, please. Remember this. The Lord, He's going to determine if what we're doing is right or wrong. Remember that. We can guess all day. The Lord will determine. Hmm? But I can tell you this. If you're willing to do... If, um, I'm, because I've told you guys this many times. If I'm around someone who begins to abuse a child or female, that's when I need encouragement. That's when I lose a part of myself. I have a severe lack of control in that area. Just like you know that. A severe lack of control. I'm not afraid to admit that. I know what the Lord requires. But I have a lack of control in that area. I've also done that before, too. All of us. All of us have our issues. All of us have something we have to work through. All of us do. All of us do. But the key is, the key is, we all know that we believe in Christ. Right? We all know that. You know where the disconnect is? Our method in dealing with the times we operate in. That's the disconnect. We have to remember that we're different parts of the body. Hmm? If the whole body is thrust 
into a situation where the feet are going to ball up, make a fist, and defend the entire body? Probably not. It's going to be the hands job, right? But all of it depends on the head. It depends on the head, right? The activities of the feet do not depend upon the hands. The activities of the hand do not depend upon the feet. They will complement each other. But the instruction comes from the head, and none of us are the head. The head is Christ. The head is Christ. Now, if Christ sends a command to the hands, he did not send that command to the feet. He sent it to the hands. So what happens if the feet don't agree? You're going to have a dysfunctional motion in the body, right? So it's also important to know what you know. That's very important. It's important to be open and to have a dialogue about what is what. Can I pick on you ladies? Women sometimes expect a person to know, you know, how they feel and all these things. And it doesn't work out sometimes, right? Yeah. <laughs> doesn't work out sometimes. I tell ladies all the time, nobody can read your mind. So you had to be kind of vocal. You know what women say? Well, I shouldn't have to say the same thing over and over again. You know what I tell them? You say it as much as you have to to keep the dialogue open. The moment the dialogue closes up, right? That's when people start assuming. We're all believers in Christ, are we not? We believe in Christ. We do. That's our common ground. But we're different parts of the body. We have different roles, different expertise and skill sets, different ambitions and different methods of approaching each issue and problem. We have different maturity levels. And it really takes us operating in a type of unity with Christ that we may go forward spiritually and accomplish things, not to devolve, right? Not to become dysfunctional, not to compete, but to complement, to continue to go forward. And that really requires us to hear from the head, to be consistent in what we do, whatever we do, and to do the best that you can do. Just take note, each member is different. Each one is different. If we can remember that, well, that's half the issues that any group could ever have and be gone. Because you'd realize not everybody is going to uh, they're going to function based off, uh, you know, passiveness or something like that. The same way, we have different ways of approaching problems, different ideologies. We've been raised differently to see one situation from multiple perspectives. Never, I, I would never expect any of you to see a situation like me. I wouldn't want that. See, I know this. Your two eyeballs see two different things. If your eyeballs saw the exact same thing, you would have no depth perception at all. Do you know that? You'd have no depth of perception. It is required that your eyes see the same thing from two different points of view. That gives you depth. Remember that. This is about being functional because we face a time that's going to cost everybody something. I'm just telling you what I know in Spain. Those poor people in Spain, God bless them, those people in Spain, 
Every time they talk to a person in Spain, they continue to tell people that someone, out of all the people that were doing cleanup from the mud and the floods, they said that someone, everybody out there that they could see, has lost someone in that flood. Do you know how horrific that is? To say that? To say that each person that you see out here has lost someone. And it's just beginning. It's not even close to the max of what we're going to get. You know, scientists are now, they're dropping their the little facade. And now they're beginning to admit that they've underestimated what's happening. Even the people that were saying global warming are beginning to admit that possibly this could be solar system wide. Gee. What a statement. Hmm? We live in a very different time. Very different time. We also live in a time that's going to require all of who we are. My hope, my hope is that collectively, as one functional body, with a common ground being Christ, that we can bring all skill sets to bear to make a difference. You know what I want to know? What say you? What's your thoughts? What are your thoughts on that? Is this something you think we could accomplish for this whole body to be functional going forward? Because I'll tell you right now, I'm not for wasting not one individual skill set for any reason whatsoever. There's no mistake. We found ourselves together. That's not a mistake. We've weathered too much. And I, for one, am not one to allow any little trick of the adversary to come in and spoil the forward momentum we could build. That requires all of us. I do know this. You know what happens when you just wake up? Maybe you're older and your leg comes out of the bed first before the rest of your body. Maybe your arm starts to move. All of a sudden you roll over and your other leg hits the floor. Well, you got two feet on the ground, your other arm reaches over, then you stand up and you start going forward. Your whole body leans in the same direction. You start that forward momentum. Right? Once you get that forward momentum, your eyes may not be fully open yet, but you're on your way somewhere. You ever do that, and then you bang right into a table? You ever do that? Or you bang right into a something? Whenever you do that, it, it seems to be the hardest. I mean, it makes it cling, doesn't it? You know why? Because when you build up forward momentum, you build strength in that momentum. Do you know that? My point is, there's a lot of strength in forward momentum. There's a lot of strength when the whole body starts moving in one direction. That's all your weight going in one direction. And so when you hit something, it makes a clinger sound, right? It makes that thunk sound. It hurts too, but my point is, you can do some damage with forward momentum without even thinking about it. That means... When the body of Christ has forward momentum, we become a bulldozer. Throughout history, in the Word of God, I noticed something. When God's children had forward momentum, they plowed over the enemy every single time. Every single time. It was only when they turned on each other, when they started turning towards each other, they had no momentum, and the enemy took advantage of them. Well, let me share this with you. I personally do not intend to stop, slow down, and I don't have reverse. I don't. And I'm 
hoping that all of us have come far enough to understand there is no going backward. I hope we've been, you know, around each other long enough to see that all of us have something to bring to the table. No matter how slight, how major, something as part of the forward momentum. When the whole body is moving, well, now that's a force to deal with. I also know that Satan is attempting to stop everything he can. This chaos you see all around you, that's him. That's him gaining power as we begin to question how we go forward. You know, like waking up in the morning, you don't determine yourself. You're, well, I'm going to go forward with 2% of my strength. You don't do that. You simply get up, you start going, then you figure things out as you go. In our case, the Lord did say, come follow me, didn't he? As the body of Christ. This is that moment we need that forward momentum. And that happens with all body parts. But did you notice when you hit your pinky toe, right? When you slam into something and you hit your pinky toe, listen to me carefully on this. When you hit your pinky toe, did you notice what happens next? The whole body stops and embraces the pinky toe. No forward momentum. Only lamenting for the pinky toe. That little tiny appendage can cause the entire body to stop. You know what that means? There is no insignificant part of the body. That's what it means. You could be that pinky toe, and I'm telling you that you have a critical position in the body of Christ. Hmm? That means everybody has a critical role in the body of Christ. And there is no part that can be forgotten about. I'll say it again. There is no part of the body that can ever be forgotten about. We would do well to remember that. Because each, each one of us is a body part. Each one of us. No matter what the role is. Each part is critical to the whole. Hmm? We all have different assignments, but we're all in one body. I do believe, I do believe, we can do a great work going forward. So let's make it so. All we have to do is say, yes, Lord, that's all. And that means collectively go forward, leaving no one behind. I know you guys have heard me say that quite a bit, right? Leaving no one behind. Even I face these dilemmas. Do you know why? Anybody? You know why? Because I'll share this with you. We know we have standards to keep. Sometimes we always don't agree on the standards, but I do not like it. When anybody has to be set aside for any reason. I think we can overcome that. I do. Especially Miss Bonnie. I do. I really do. Lord knows we're in that time where he will empower us to overcome if we simply request it and act upon it. So what say you? You all think that's doable? Hmm? You think that's doable? Because what, what's happening in the world is for real. The consequences are going to be for real. The stress is going to be for real. 
the situations you're going to be trying. And it will not be like any movie. In fact, your experts in the world, they have no solution to what's coming. Some of you may have been there before. I know I have. I've been in the middle of cities that are in chaos and falling and burning at the same time. I've been in other places that were on the brink. Still others were totally in ruin. I've seen what mankind can do. On both ends of the spectrum. But I've also seen what the body of Christ can do collectively. When they decide to go forward. By the Lord's standards. And I'll say it again. Personally, I'm a roughneck. I am. That means if the world were peaceful, if, if it, during a time of peace, I really have no position. That's the truth. I'm at my best in times of chaos. In times of great adversity. When people are stressed out. I'm at my best. But not everybody operates that way. But there's some like that out there just like me just for this time that's coming there are others out there just like some of you some of you are nurturers you know what that is a nurturer a nurturer is like uh, we, we had grandparents that inspired us you remember that now our grandparents were strong because they never wavered from the faith many of them didn't no matter what happened they remain faithful even through crucial, I mean, just terrible times. The Great Depression. All these different things. But what they did was they would strengthen others. And with that newfound strength, those who gained that strength from that encouragement went forward to do even more. See, there's always a place in the body where you can come back and recharge and go right back out there. Some of you are that. So you can't envy a person who's made for the front lines when you're made to strengthen those who have to face Satan himself. Hmm? Hopefully you can see how that works. It's kind of like the ankle. You know the ankle? When you're running, your thighs may get tired, your calves may get tired, right? But your ankles don't get tired. You ever notice that? We used to do a death run every Friday. Sometimes it was so bad, the next day you couldn't even feel, you, you couldn't move your legs, first of all. But you couldn't feel your thighs after the death run. With all the pain, your back is hurting, your arms are hurting, shoulders hurting, everything is hurting. And with all of that, after a death run, nobody ever complained, my ankles hurt. My ankles are fatigued. Nobody ever complained about that. You can break an ankle, yes, that's not what I'm talking about. Because all the muscles that you utilize, in your thighs, your calves, in your torso, all the, you know, these different places, they get stiff. That's what you're using. But nobody ever wakes up and says, you know what, my ankles are tired. Anybody ever hear that statement? That, that somebody's ankles, do, do you ever hear uh, an Olympic, uh, not an Olympic, but a runner, somebody like that, somebody who runs a marathon, they wake up and say, you know, my ankles are tired. I never heard that before. Have you guys ever heard that before? I never heard that before. What is the point to that? Some people are just like ankles. They may not have a lot of strength, but their stability, their alignment of the rest 
of the leg in proportion with the feet because that's what your ankle does, right? Your ankle swivels to do what? So that your feet can always be a platform no matter what the upper half is doing. Correct? But your calves and your thighs that's where the strength is. All the moving and thrusting and everything else is coming from that part of the body, not the ankles. And the feet at stability or the muscles in the thighs and in the calves mean absolutely nothing. If your ankles do not work, it doesn't matter how strong you are. You're not going to go anywhere. Do you guys see the point? Some of you are just like the ankles. Your strength is an encouragement. You notice certain things and you realign other things. But have an understanding. The ankle is not well acquainted with the thigh or the calf. It's not. Only the thigh knows what it endures. Only the calf knows what it endures. The ankle does not. So we're all like that. Different. Very different. Very unique. But all part of one body. I tell you, the days we face, they will require the body and the adversary is defeated so long as the body exists and can stand and can go, can go forward Christ is the head we can certainly do our part hmm? we can do that alright Pastor Paul is on let me get off the air I'm going to talk with Pastor Paul at 1015 I'll be on with him Folks, God bless you. I'll see you guys shortly. Right here. It's EOT. I'm going to turn to Pastor Paul. So some of you will hear audio here. Uh, but the others may flip to Pastor Paul. So we'll see how that goes. See you guys in a few. COT's base of operations is right here at thecouncilftime.com. COT has no other outlet or venue. These are other folks who will rebroadcast. Anything COT does is by the main page here at thecounciloftime.com.